This week we are back in Wales. Having explored this little country before, we already know its scenery punches well above its weight. This time we are making our way somewhere new, somewhere never explored by us before. But before we do, well, this is Wales and its weather, it can be unkind. We needed to make a pit stop to get one very important component fitted to one of the vans. Good morning folks and welcome back and it's an exciting one today where not only are we heading into Wales which we love, the sun is shining which we love and we're getting an essential van life component fitted to Joni's van Tilly that I think if you're going to do van life in the UK outside of July and August you 100% need. come to have the heater fitted at auto term which used to be called planar planar something like that uh, reason being same as our electrics we've got the same heater in our van it has never failed on us we've had it for three years and we have battered it uh, in minus 15 in the alps uh, our last trip it was on all the time and it's just kept going so we're getting exactly the same one for me mum the two kilowatt version but i tell you what these boys don't mess about the seats out already it's up on ramps holes are going in it is well underway <laughs> That bit there comes straight out of there. So there's the hole for it, and that's the job I do not want to do, hence why we're here. Well, I said they weren't messing about. I just went for a quick coffee inside Fanny, which we've left parked up here. And already the seat's out. They've drilled the hole through the bottom of the van under the seat where the um, turret's gonna go, and they'll feed the uh, lines out. Drop the fuel tank, the feed pickup from the fuel tank's in already. Uh, much prefer that, so it comes direct from the main vehicle fuel tank rather than having a little jerry can. And yeah, I don't think it'll be long before they start putting it all in and back together. Joni and Emily have taken AJ for a walk while the guys are finishing up and I thought I'd tell you just a couple of things about why I chose Auto Term initially for this van and why I'm going with it again in Tilly, my mum's van. Uh, one of the reasons is it comes with a free year warranty. The second reason is they all come now with a free silent pump. So diesel heaters can be tick, 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 tick noisy when they're running, especially when they're running high. Uh, the silent pump does, I think you can still hear it a little bit, but it is much, much better. Um, it's got an auto altitude thingy. I don't know the technical gubbins behind it, but it will work at 2,500 meters above sea level before you have to start even thinking about altitude. Now with the trips we've done in the past, uh, we do like to go up a mountain road, so that is a, a bonus. There's also a selection of control panels you can use to, to run the heaters, including some that work remotely. For my mum, we're just gonna go with a simple version, I think. I think that's the easiest way, so on, off, thermostatic control, that kind of thing. But I'll show you all that in a minute, because it looks like, it looks like she's finished. So we're gonna take it to a park up, we're gonna stay local, give it a test, make sure everything's working, make sure there's no problems, and I'll give you a quick run through of what's there, basically. Apologies for any background noise, folks. We're in quite a busy car park. Now, it's been a couple of days since the diesel heater was fitted. Uh, I wanted to give it a bit of time before I show you guys it, just to make sure it all works and I can report that it does. Also, we took a couple of days to explore a little bit of Snowdonia National Park. We've been driving around, uh, looking at all the scenery and it's been lovely. We had lunch by the lake and we've had a really cracking time, but the diesel heater, so I'll show you where it is. It's fitted up nice and neatly here under the seat and I'm really pleased that it fit in that gap because in a small van like this one, if it had gone anywhere else, then it would have taken up quite a lot of space. And because this has got brushless motors the same as mine, it's relatively quiet. Now it's noisy on start up, all diesel heaters are and when you shut it down, but once it's up to temperature and it's running, it's really, really quiet because of those brushless motors. So it works, it's worked perfectly and there's no way I could have got it in there as easily and as neatly and as safely as the boys at Autoterm did. So I was really happy with the install. You've seen some of it. Uh, they sealed it all up properly underneath. So yeah, proper happy with that. I'll show you the control panel. This is it here, nicely located neatly with all the rest of the electrics and it's perfect because it means my mum hasn't got to get out of bed 
to turn it on although to be fair in this van i think you could probably reach this from anywhere but top tip if you're putting a diesel heater in make sure you put the switch near your bed so you don't have to get up on those cold mornings to put it on i'm not going to turn it on now i'm in a rush emily Joni, and aj are going on a massive hike and i really want to go with them so i'm going to keep this short i did just want to say though we're not being paid to make this video um we haven't been giving it for free either we have got a bit of a discount but that's good because it means if you want to go with the same heater we can also get them to give you a discount so if you use the code camper vibe 5 you'll get yourself five percent off you don't have to pay for the install you can just buy the heater or you can obviously take it there and get it fitted by them which is what i did because i was a bit of a chicken right now i'm gonna go because i want to get on that hike stay up front or stay behind it's not that easy it's never easy this is Pomp Gabriel Bridge. It used to be a toll bridge, a penny to walk across, and a tuppence for a bike. Tuppence. Doesn't that just sound old? I love it. Tuppence. We've mapped out a bit of a circular route, we hope, and I think it takes in quite a lot. So there's a few bits and pieces to see along with the sheep along the way. And the first stop, I believe, I hope, is a waterfall. <laughs> I think your dog fancies lamb. It's not having lamb, I can tell you that for nothing. You leave them little lambinos alone. so I hope you can hear me but the falls were named after the Victorians who were absolutely obsessed with fairies but this was formed over 20,000 years ago in the last, last ice age and along here in the summer the water is diverted along a massive pipe so it only goes down to a trickle and it powers the woolen mill down in the, in the little village. You call that a trickle? No, it ain't summer yet. It's not a trickle. No, that's full blow. It ain't summer. What's the waterfall's called? Fairy Falls. But now, it's lunchtime. Just trying to find somewhere to have lunch, but it just keeps going up and up and up. Obviously, Emily stormed off ahead. I'm doing the decent thing, and I'm going to hang back with Joan and make sure that she's OK. <laughs> Come on, we all know I love hills. Run up this if you weren't here. Look. Handles for grannies. Yeah, don't have our attack at the top, Joan, because we've got no phone signal as well. So that's alright, it's a big hill, you can roll me back down. I sent a new channel segment coming on, Roly Poly Joni. Don't know how you run up these hills, knackered. <laughs> I just walk with walk with haste. I feel that I'm going quite slow if I'm honest. Like, I'm not out of breath or nothing. Ex-military would do that to you. The rest of us peasants, we're going to struggle up. It's called the sty if you need to die. And I need to die. I can't count the amount of times that we get to this point where there's a sty and we have to turn around because AJ just can't get over them because they're a little bit too high. But when we find one with a little, like, lifty up thing, can't lift it up. <laughs> For the dog, it's so much better. So if you're a farmer or a sty builder, is that a job? I'd love that job. Builder of styes. Oh, bit of wood and you love it. Yeah, bit of wood. If you do that for a living, if you could put little dog access hatches in for older disabled dogs, that would be lovely. Very much appreciated it would be. <laughs> Can you get through, Joe? <laughs> it's like bloody care in the community, isn't it, this? It is, isn't it? You know what I mean? Just... Day release. I've just had a fall off of her head. <laughs> You'll get stuck. You'll get jammed. <laughs> oh, how about that for a view?
I will address the old uh, earmuffs because I know <laughs> you're going to get me in the comments. Um, wearing a woolly hat's all right in the winter, but when it's weather like this, where it's sort of 12, 13 degrees, your head gets really hot. Now I need something because otherwise I get wind in my ears and it gives me earache. So earmuffs are the perfect solution. So I still get to keep my peak to keep the sun off my eyes. I don't have to wear sunglasses, which is an issue when you're filming because you have to keep taking them on, taking them off, taking them on, taking them off. So I'm wearing earmuffs. They look ridiculous. They look stupid. And these are Emily's, but I'm rolling with it and it's working. So. Who cares, when you get to my age, you don't give a toss anymore. I am flapping a little bit. I've, uh, we've swapped. I've got the backpack and the camera and Louise has got AJ because there's sheep about and I believe we're on a, like a side of a mountain but she reckons it's just a big hill. But honestly, the old butt's going like that. We've even had to send Joni like further afield to shoo the sheep away and stuff. So yeah, I need to put you down because I'm gonna fall. Sometimes we're crashing down, but we get up and start from the ground. Nice squash sandwiches. Feed me, feed me. Much needed fuel is going in. We've made it to Klondike Mine, but we'll show you that in a second if we can. It's a long way down. Uh, but we're having squash, sweaty egg sandwiches and what are you having, cheese? I've got cheese and pickle. Cheese and pickle. Even if I'm falling down, I will keep on searching for my highs. You can say I lost my mind, I will keep on holding my head high. We're just heading down to the mine now. It's another very steep descent. So the mine is like down below them trees. And that's where we were having lunch right up there. So it is a, it's a challenging one. This is Plonduck Mill. We're not going all the way down there because we're really tired. We've been out for three and a half hours and I still think we're, we're only just over halfway. So Lou sent the drone down. That's as good as you're gonna get. But this mill was built in 1900 and it was for the lead mining from Pandora's mine, which is two miles away. But unfortunately, the people who constructed it was really optimistic and thought it was gonna do really well, but it closed five years later and then completely, completely closed in 1911, so which is quite a shame, isn't it? So it was only working for 11 years? No, it was working for five years. Working for five years. Working for five years, ceased like working and then fully closed six years later. <laughs> Optimistic. I have no idea what this lake is called because we got lost, we've taken the wrong turn in, but it's really pretty and I'm sure Louise will put the name up on the screen. <laughs> I don't know if it's come across on camera, uh, but this hike's been a long one. I think four hours we've been out already and we've still got to get back over the hill and back down to get back. Uh, so on that note, we're going to end the hike or the filming for the hike here so we can just get back because we've got guests uh, coming for dinner. So that's going to be interesting. I don't know if you can hear the lambs, they're loving life. Right, see you back at the van. That night we were indeed joined by some guests. You may well even recognise their newly finished self-converted vans. Seeing as we had company and after such a long hike, there really was only one option for dinner. I definitely think we earned this Chinese tonight, I'm telling you. Oh, I'm so hungry. We might, we might need to go back and find a few more people. Yes. <laughs> we've got to eat it. With your box of Chinese. <laughs> it's great. On a scale of one to 10, how happy are you? I am extremely happy, like at least a 15. Now, being the professional YouTubers that we are, we, uh, well, we just didn't film anything after that. I can confirm though that the Chinese was very, very nice. Everyone ready? One van, two vans, three vans. We are in convoy. Good 
Good morning folks, we have just about recovered from our hike yesterday. It was a long one, wasn't it? It was, yeah. She only done so well to do it, didn't she? Yeah, I was shattered by the end of it. But today we are on the road, we're in a four van convoy and we're excited because we're heading to where? Anglesey! The Isle of Anglesey. I'm really excited. Yeah, we've never... What's another island? Yeah, it's a whole other island we've never been before. So we've got no idea what to expect. So yeah, let's go and find out. I was hoping to show you a little bit more of Anglesey on the drive across, but you could probably tell it was very, very, or still is very, very foggy. Uh, we've actually come to a campsite because we are in desperate need of a shower and to do some washing and Emily's dying to properly clean out the van. So yeah, she's gonna crack on with that and I'm gonna walk the cat like a knobhead. I must admit, I do love being on a campsite because I can give the van a good old clean, get everything out. And I tell you what, I think this two minute tour is definitely, most definitely gonna be at least within, in a minute, I guarantee you. So without further ado, let's get going. We are Nant Isaf. You've got some little parking bays here. Parking bays here, what are they called? Pitches, you've got pitches, pitches, hard standing pitches. It's 15 pounds, no electric, and 20 pounds with electric. You've got the shipping container here, which is the toilet wash up area. Toilets in here, little wave, and showers in there. Johnny is using the showers at the moment, but do not be deceived by the shipping container because it is so, so pretty. So, so pretty, so, so nice. I'm not doing well at this, am I? You just go into the house there to do the, uh, the painting and stuff. You've also got some washing machines over there that we will be making good use of she's out with the sheep and lambs this is amazing i love it you've got some horses here and yeah that is, that is it this is it nancy isaf and i've done that in one minute and 19 seconds we're doing it wrong and a bit of waffle so i'm nailing it so for the rest of the time look pygmy goats and there's baby ones these baby ones, they're going to go off to a lady who's built them, a little pen, and they've got a ball pit, and they're going to absolutely love it. But look, look how cute they are. I absolutely, oh, it's so, so much fun. And then now I'm just being watched by, by another vlog knob over here. <laughs> but that, I tell you what, I'm available for all of your two minute tours whenever you need them. Back to our pitch here. And that, my friends, is two minute tour out. not done all that much today if I'm honest sorted out the washing cleaned out the van a bit of a, a rest day so to speak a reshuffle and a reset Emily's just going through her magical crocs with um, John and Mandy uh, Mandy wants to get a pair so that's surprising but apparently the cro crocs are useful and then we've set her up on like a little school table this is the ideal size look but like now if we're parked up in the forest or the woods or something there's no lights there mm. so I put them on yeah but it's great to pick the poo it is, it's really good. And all you have to do is just like point and shoot yeah. for where you want to go, <laughs> point and shoot. Was it something that I couldn't It wasn't on properly. <laughs> a little accident there. <laughs> I'm leaking at both ends. 
Good morning, folks. Now that Emily's had a second shower of the day, free shower, <laughs> get in the water. Uh, we're all reset, everything's washed, everything's clean. We're clean, we're hitting the road again, aren't we? Yes, so, so nice to be clean and so nice to be back on the road. Yes, and we're heading to Bowl, Bowl Maris. Bowl Maris? I don't know, Louise. Somewhere Maris. We've parted ways with John and Mandy. They're off to prepare for the next adventure. You can find them both on YouTube, by the way. I'll put the, the links in the description. If you're coming to Anglesey, though, prepare yourself for narrow roads. They are skinny, aren't they? They are. They are very tight, actually, yeah. Nothing wrong with a bit of tight. Uh, it's the first one of the video. I think. I'm not, I'm not. Not entertaining it. I'm not, I'm not even acknowledging you. I know that you're trying to fix me, but I don't want to be like you. If you are coming to Anglesey, Emily's got one of her top tips for you. You need to come up with an empty fuel tank because we found it for £1.48 a litre. That's like the cheapest ever so far. Well, not ever. I remember well, at the, the moment, <laughs> like in the current times, it's the cheapest. It's cheap, only we've come on with a full fuel tank, so... Yeah, we've done well. It's blowing an absolute hooli, so the earmuffs are back out, rocking the earmuffs. If you haven't got some, I highly recommend that you get some. Uh, this car park's six quid for 12 hours. There's no other option, so yeah, six pounds. So it's a bit expensive, but it is right close to town. And in this wind, I don't fancy walking along the coast. You don't fancy it then? No. There's a storm coming. Apparently you can take a tour out to Puffin Island to see the puffins, which would be amazing, but I don't think that's an option today. But Emily has got you some fun facts. Balmaris, I think, was originally a Viking settlement. It then started to be built as a town when Edward I conquered Wales, and the population now is around 1,200. And in spite of the wind, it's very, very pretty. It is very pretty, and I was trying to get my words out with everything going around, and yeah. And you can fine. see uh, mainland Wales just mm -hmm. over the water, which I think is uh, Snowdonia National Park, so that's pretty cool, isn't it? It is. It's really, it's actually really nice just to walk around here, despite the, the, the wind. Yes, and I think there's another car park that's only four quid, but we missed that one, so shh. This is the gel. Unfortunately, there's no dogs, so me and Joni are going to go in, and Louise is going to be on AJ watch. This jail was built in 1829 and could hold approximately 30 inmates. It wasn't open for very long and then once it did close, it went to a police station and then a child's clinic and now a museum. But it is pretty cool. This is the cell of the condemned. There were two hangings within this prison. One was for attempted murder of his wife and the other one was for murdering his father-in-law and both bodies are buried within the prison grounds, but nobody knows where their actual burial site is. The prison itself was also a mixed prison, so you had male and females in here. And when you're going around and you're reading like some of the reasons why they was in prison, it's just, it's just silly. Poor old Mary was in here for stealing and wearing certain apparel. Don't know what... Johnny, did you just fall over? No. But anyway, poor Mary done eight months for wearing the wrong stuff and stealing. Me and Joni... Don't hide away, Joni. Me and Joni have come back to this room because the ladies on uh, the reception area have told us that this room, a gentleman called William, 
would live in here and he is known to be like the resident ghost and doesn't actually like women so he kind of like people have heard him growling in the ear um, there was a little boy that came with his family and was crying and said that his mum wasn't allowed in here because the man inside said he, that she wasn't allowed in so we'll just come back for a quick little go around just as if we catch something on the camera Oh, it was amazing. Me and Johnny had a great time. And how much was it to get in? It was £7 per adult or £5.50 if you was a senior. Oh, this channel just gets better and better. We're giving you senior prices now I know, as well. exactly. Well, it's because we've got a senior with us now. <laughs> right, should we carry on? Yep. There's also a really, really pretty castle, but we're not going in it because I don't want to pay and AJ's done too much waiting about. Light squeeze. <laughs> so that was Balmorris, lovely little town, and now we're on round the coast. We're going to try going to the other side of the island to uh, get out of the wind. Hopefully. come across to Nubra Forest and it looks absolutely lovely. Um, it is AMPR camera controlled now though and we think um, that parking up wild camping uh, is going to be incredibly difficult here on Anglesey. I think it's been perhaps battered and everywhere is um, no overnight parking, no camping, all that kind of thing. So probably have a little explore down here and then try and find somewhere to stay for the night. Glorious, look at it. What a shame you can't stay, this would be ideal, wouldn't it? Ice cream van and I'm on a diet. An ice cream van. Cookies in this jar, did I take it too far? Now I dwell in the sand like a fish on land. This is Newborough Beach. And I've got to admit, as beaches go, because we've got perfect blue skies, it is absolutely lovely. The tide's halfway out and we've just found out there's a five mile circular walk that takes us all the way out. Oh, I can't see a thing takes us all the way out there. Uh, there's like a monument on the headland and then it loops back round and we're going to come back through the forest. So yeah, it should be a good one. Was off. It's a really cool spot because it's literally you've got this huge pine forest that meets the beach and then obviously there's some sand dunes and whatnot. Massive vast sand here and then over there you can see all of Snowdonia. Uh, the little island we're going to is tidal though so you will need to watch that. You need to make sure the tide's out before you cross it because the tide can come in quick and you can get Stranded, but hopefully that's not going to happen to us today. When the tide's in, it will come into that gap there and completely cut off the island, so we need to be very careful. We've made it to the island! Oh, I'm really excited to do this little walk, it's really pretty. It says here, the pillow-shaped rocks on the approach to the island were formed by lava bubbling out of the seabed. That is pretty cool. They are some of the oldest rocks on Anglesey and add to the island's rich geology. Geology. And you <laughs> didn't even have to get your Google out for I this one. I know, it was easy. This is a good fun fact place. Oh, So hard to see. Definitely windy on this island. I've progressed to earmuffs. What do you think of my muffs? I think your muffs are amazing. It's a relatively easy walk and it is 100% worth it. Look at that. Pull back drop. What you got him? I think we found a seal. Joni found a seal. Yeah, Joni found a seal. I didn't. This is what AJ's been waiting for his chance to get in the sea. He absolutely loves it. When he was younger, he would have been straight out for a swim, but these days he's happy with a bit of a paddle, isn't he? Yeah, he just wants the paddle. He's like, mm, I'll just stay by the surface, so I won't go too far. This is definitely a bit of me. This used to be a Catholic church 
until Henry VIII came along and put a stop to it and then all of the lead and wood was taken away from the roof and walls and the church was left to ruins. And it's the patron saint of Lovers Church, It, isn't it? is the patron saint of Lovers Church. Ah, oh, that's nice, nice isn't it? Nice, yes. Yeah. <laughs> It told me the thing would shape or form the you're in The place you're from, the wealth or the colour of your skin All the way around the island there's like little private coves, it's really really pretty and if you walk all the way to the end you'll get to this one which is absolutely stunning and then just behind me up there there's a couple of these little tower things and uh, Emily's going to tell you what they are. This is a little tower and the one on the other side is big tower. They're actually both lighthouses. They're on the southeast and southwest of the island but there isn't any known actual date of when they was built but this one they think was there the longest. It's pretty. It's very pretty isn't it? I just love this little cove. Honestly I could just stay here all day look at it. It's just... Oh. Once you come off the island, if you don't want to walk back along the beach, you can walk through this loop, loopula? Loopula? <laughs> loopula, that's uh, circular and a loop combined. You can work through this loop, work through this loopula. Oh, work. you are tired, aren't you? I am tired. Long walk for you. We've lost Joni. It's been a long day, a lot of filming. Hopefully you've enjoyed the content. If you have, I encourage you to hit subscribe because we're going to do a lot more of this over the coming months. Do you yes, want to say please. something? <laughs> if you liked this video, please consider hitting the thumbs up button and dinging that bell and subscribing because this one's going to lose the will to live anytime soon. And we'll see you lot on the next one. <laughs> Bye.